Hi, I'm Chris with the information website SmartIrrigation.com and on this chilly afternoon we're going to take you inside with a guest technician and show you some advanced programming options you can use on your Hunter controller. Hi, my name's Justin and today we'll be going through some advanced programming techniques for your Hunter irrigation controllers that can help save water and money while better meeting the water needs of your landscape. Have you ever needed to run some of your sprinklers on a different schedule than the rest of them? Or have you wondered how to automatically keep newly planted seed and sod properly watered multiple times a day without overwatering with your other sprinklers? Or have you hoped for an easy technique to reduce water runoff and increase absorption on sloped landscapes? Or what about setting your sprinklers to run after a set period of days that isn't tied to the day of the week? Using the advanced programming techniques we'll go over in this video, you'll be able to solve these problems and more. Specifically, I'll be covering how to run advanced watering schedules using multiple programs, such as the A, B, and C programs, multiple program start times, programming in the cycle and soak watering method, and using the interval cycle watering schedule. Today, I'll be using the Hunter X2 controller here as an example, but everything I show you will also work similarly with the popular X-Core series, Hunter's Commercial Pro C series, and even the older SRC, EC, and XC controllers. Before we go into how to program these techniques into the controller, let's use a hypothetical landscape as an example to help us understand why these advanced programming techniques might be needed. In this landscape, there are two controllers. One operates the three valves in the front yard, and one operates the four valves in the backyard. Each of these seven valves corresponds to a zone of sprinklers in the landscape and are each electronically controlled by a station on the controller to which they're wired. In the front yard, the valve that is wired into station one on the controller runs a zone that covers the grass. This grass doesn't need any special considerations and we can water it on a regular program using Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays early in the morning. The second station in the front waters a garden patch with leafy vegetables. Since these vegetables have shallow roots, this area would benefit from short waterings every morning around sunrise. The third station in the front waters another garden patch, but this time with root vegetables. Since these vegetables have deep roots in well-tilled soil, this area would benefit from deeper waterings twice a week, specifically on Mondays and Thursdays so that gardening can be scheduled on other days when the soil is drier. Moving to the backyard, the first and second stations control zones that water an established lawn area. However, this section of the backyard is on a steep slope. Even though we are using low flow rotors and rotators, we can only run the sprinklers in this area for about half their needed runtime before the water starts to run off. To avoid this, this area would benefit from the cycle and soak watering method. The third station in the backyard waters a dirt area that was recently planted with grass seed. For the first two or three weeks after seeding, the topmost layer of soil needs to be kept constantly moist during this critical germination period, but not so wet that the seeds get washed away or that water is being wasted below the first few inches of the soil. Therefore, for the next few weeks, we will want this area to be watered for a short period, three times a day, every day of the week. Finally, the fourth station in the back runs a zone of drip irrigation that provides water to the trees and shrubs along the west fence. The water needs of these particular trees and shrubs work out to running the drip system for one and a half hours every four days. Since each week has an odd number of days, the easiest way to make sure that this area is watered every four days is to use the interval cycle watering schedule. If you remember from our previous video on basic irrigation programming, a program is a watering schedule where each zone of sprinklers runs for a set length of time, one after another. This program starts at a specified start time or times and runs on specified watering days. Most hunter controllers, such as the ones we're looking at today, have at least three different programs, often labeled A, B, and C. Each of these programs have their own fixed set of program start times, valve run times, and watering days. And these programs are accessible through the PRG button on your controller where you can see 
which program's variables you are viewing and modifying. Once set, each program runs independently of each other. Therefore, using multiple programs lets us customize watering schedules based on the unique needs of each zone or set of zones, taking advantage of different sets of start times and watering days. As a general note though, all programs share the same controller settings for seasonal adjustment and rain sensors, as well as basic settings such as date and time. If your controller is set to the run position, any program on your controller that has at least one start time will automatically cycle through that program's valve run times on that program's watering days, starting at that program's selected start times. There's no need to activate this feature other than making sure that each program has all the components of the irrigation program, its start time, its valve run times, and its watering days. And deactivating a program is as simple as setting all of that program's start times to the off position. And what happens if there are multiple programs whose run times overlap? Don't worry, the controller will automatically run them one after another without any overlap. With that in mind, let's return to the complex watering needs of our example landscape. As our example highlights, keeping track of the watering needs of each irrigation zone and creating a combination of controller programs that meets those needs can be a bit overwhelming. That's why we recommend using an irrigation zone chart, like the one we've created and made available for download on our website smartirrigation.com. Using the zone chart from smartirrigation.com, we easily organized the details and watering schedule of each irrigation zone and planned it across three programs for each controller according to the start times and watering days needed by each irrigation zone. The result is a master schedule for each controller that contains each program. Now that these zone charts are complete, these master schedules are the perfect template for accurately entering each program into the controllers. And don't get rid of your zone charts once you enter your programs. Keeping this zone chart by each controller in the future also creates a record of these details so you don't need to remember them, and you also have a baseline to compare against when making modifications to your program. Okay, so now that we have our different programs for each controller all sorted out, let's start programming them in. Let's start with the front yard controller. The front lawn rotators on zone 1 will run on program A, and since they're just a standard program, we can program it exactly the same way we demonstrated in our previous video on basic hunter controller programming, starting first with the program start time, then entering the valve run times, and then finally entering the watering days. So we'll speed up this section. The only thing we want to make sure we pay special attention to is making sure the program start time, valve run times, and watering days all show an A here, indicating that we are changing these values for program A. Moving on to zone 2. Since the sprinklers that are watering the leafy green section of the garden need to run on different watering days and use a different start time than the lawn rotators, we'll schedule this zone under a different program which we see here is program B. This program is also a standard irrigation program using a single start time and weekly watering days. So we will enter it the same way we did the previous zone while making sure to use the PRG button to select program B for the start time, run time, and watering days. Since we only want program B to apply to zone 2, we will leave the valve runtime for zone 1 and 3 blank and only program a runtime under 2. Here, we'll make sure every day of the weekly watering days is selected to water using the up arrow to activate the raindrop. Since zone 3 is also a standard irrigation program using a single start time and weekly watering days, we can enter it the same way as well. And just a reminder, even though both program B and C have a start time of 5 a.m., meaning on Mondays and Thursdays, the schedule would appear to overlap, the controller will automatically adjust and run program C after program B finishes, so we don't need to modify program C's start time. 
And with that, the front controller is now all set to water each of the different zones in the front yard in a way that is optimized to meet the needs of each area and minimizes wasted water. This was done by programming in three separate standard irrigation programs to run together by utilizing programs A, B, and C on the Hunter X2 controller. With the front controller now fully programmed, let's now move on to the backyard controller. According to this controller's master schedule, it also needs three different programs to best meet the needs of its irrigation zones. However, this schedule also introduces two new advanced programming techniques, the cycle and soak watering method and interval cycle watering days. For zones one and two, we're going to use the cycle and soak technique, which allows us to water for the same total amount of time while minimizing the water loss to runoff. Looking at the term cycle and soak, cycle refers to the period when the zone is watering and it shouldn't be any longer than the time needed to generate runoff. Soak refers to the period without irrigation, which is when the water is given time to soak downwards deeper into the soil until the next cycle begins. And this is typically 30 to 60 minutes, depending on your soil's unique properties. Some controllers offer an advanced or hidden menu to program in the actual cycle and soak times for each valve and program. In the case of this Hunter X2, this can be found by holding down the plus sign and turning the main selection dial to the run times menu. However, you can program the cycle and soak watering method with any controller with any number of valves simply by using multiple start times and a few calculations. Going back to zones 1 and 2, we can run each zone for about half of its total needed run time. So that means we need to run two cycles. Since each cycle begins at a program start time, we need to add two start times to program A. We can set the first start time at our regular 2 a.m. time, and then for the second start time, we need to calculate how long each zone needs to let soak before the cycle starts again. Since we only need each zone to soak for about 30 minutes, and that while one zone is running, all the other zones are soaking, we can see that we can program our second start time for 3 a.m. And now we just program in our 50% run times for these two stations and then our regular weekly watering days and we're good to go. Moving on to the newly seeded area in zone 3, we also need to program multiple start times for this area, but for a different reason than we would for the cycle and soak method. In this case, we're focused on keeping the seeds and the top layer of soil constantly moist but not wet enough to wash away the seeds during this critical germination phase. This might take a bit of testing, but for a zone being watered with MP rotators like this zone is, the schedule we're using is a good starting point. So we'll select program B, enter in our three start times, making sure we water during the hottest parts of the day, enter in our run time, and set the program to run for every day, which is indicated when all days have a raindrop over them. Finally, we need to set the drip irrigation for the trees and shrubs to run with a single start time, but on a four day interval cycle for its watering days. Since the watering days will be different from programs A and B, we will need to schedule zone four under program C. First, we'll enter program C's start time, and then we'll add station 4 to program C with a runtime of 80 minutes. Also, it's okay to program drip irrigation to be running a bit later in the morning, since it's more effective at delivering water to the roots and bypassing evaporation than the sprays, rotors, and rotators used elsewhere in this landscape. Once it's time to enter the program's watering days, we will need to enter into the interval watering menu. This is accessed by pressing the left arrow once, or using the right arrow to scroll past all the regular weekly watering days, and then past the even odd watering, until you get to this menu here. This looks very similar to the regular weekly watering days menu, with the days of the week also listed at the bottom, but the major distinction in this menu is that it also has at least one number displayed, along with the days of the week. If there is only one number on the display, such as on the X-Core controller, this number represents the length of the watering cycle or interval. 
A cycle or interval length of 1 would result in watering every day, whereas a cycle or interval length of 7 would result in watering once per week, with the program watering at the beginning of each cycle. For this program, we'll enter an interval length of 4. For controllers that have a second number, the rightmost number represents a one-time count of how many days are left until the interval begins, or in other words, how many days until the program begins watering. If this number is a zero, the program will run today if the program still has a start time that hasn't yet passed. If all of the program start times have already passed, then this program won't run until the next interval begins, which in this case would be in another four days. For our program, we'll leave it at zero. Finally, the days of the week along the bottom of the display represent the days on which the interval cycle is allowed to water. For the interval cycle to run normally, all of these days should be allowed. An important note is that on this menu, allowed watering days are simply represented by the abbreviated day of the week, rather than a raindrop. If there is a day of the week that you don't want the program to run on, you can block that day by selecting it and using the minus sign to put a dash in the place of the abbreviated day of the week. However, if the beginning of the interval cycle happens to land on a blocked day, that watering interval will be cancelled and the program won't run until the following interval lands on an allowed day. Since this can lead to the program not running for two or more intervals, the interval watering cycle may not be the best choice if there are days of the week that you need to have blocked off. So for our program, we will make sure that all of these days are allowed, showing the name of each day of the week here. And with that, we've now completed entering program C into the backyard controller. Before we go though, it's always a good idea to double check all of your controller programs against your master schedule just to make sure that everything was entered under the correct program. Now that both the front and back controllers have been double checked against our zone chart master schedule, we're ready to turn the dial to the run position and leave them to water efficiently and effectively for the rest of the season. There you have it. Now you know how to do some advanced programming with your Hunter controller. And for more smart irrigation tips, check out our website at smartirrigation.com and remember to like and subscribe.